Tubals in a China Shop is brought to you by these great companies that are giving us money to let you listen to their stuff. Bullshit, Kyle. We make this show. We make this show. You and me. Tubals in a China Shop is brought to you by us. <laughs> Someone's got to pay the bills, Dan, because it's not our trading. <laughs> <laughs> All right, roll them. Investor Loan Source is a private money lender that provides investment property loans to real estate investors. What do they offer? Well, Kyle, they use 100% private capital, offering a variety of products, including fix and flip loans, commercial loans, and hard money loans. Interesting. And uh, where are they available? Well, glad you asked. They, they currently lend in 25 states and are quite eager to talk about your real estate project with you. So, uh, where can we contact these guys? Oh, it's easy, Kyle. It's easy. We can contact them today at 409-735-6267 or find them online visiting www.ils.cash. What was that number again? It's as easy as pie. 409-735-6267. Contact them today. What was the name again? Investor Loan Source. Find them at ils.cash. Straight Talk Wireless knows there are plenty of reasons you might need a new phone. But switching to a better wireless provider doesn't have to be one of them. Keep your own phone and save when you switch to any Straight Talk wireless plan, like our $45 Silver Unlimited plan with unlimited high-speed data and 5 gigs of hotspot, plus nationwide 5G and America's best networks. Keep your own phone. Switch to a better wireless plan. Straight Talk Wireless, available at Walmart and Walmart.com. Requires a compatible unlocked phone and QIOP kit. 5G capable device required. Actual availability, coverage, and speed may vary. See latest terms and conditions at straighttalk.com. You are listening to an entertainment program put together by a company called Financial Ineptitude. Anything said on this show is not an endorsement or professional advice. Would you really want to tell a court of law you were suing us because you thought taking financial advice from two idiots on a podcast put out by Financial Ineptitude was a good idea? Really? Clown hats on your face. Hello and welcome, everyone. Welcome to the China Shop. We're so thrilled you made it today. Got exciting, exciting news after that CPI data. I'm shopkeeper Dan with me. As always, is Kyle, creator of FinancialNeptitude.com. Kyle, how's inflation treating you today? Ah, man, I don't know if you watched the markets at all today, but that was one of the craziest things I think I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> kick them while they're down, kick them while they're up. <laughs> I think a lot of people probably had accounts blown up today. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully you're listening. That wasn't you. Yes. At the very least, follow risk management if you had a bad day. Well, a day like today is one of those days where like tape starts going insane. Uh, the volatility is just off the charts. Uh, I was just like, yeah, I'll just close this out and come back tomorrow. Right. I think it was uh, Leo from Orderflow Labs that tweeted that he could see the tears on the tape. <laughs> that's, that's about right. <laughs> Well, should we uh, should we jump into it? Yeah, let's talk about some news. We're just skippy tubals trading information. What? Tubals trading information. I'm inclined to agree. Tubals trading information. That is accurate. Very accurate. What information? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, Kyle, what are we starting with today? Well, I mean, I'll just quickly touch on the inflation numbers. Um, the the CPI came in at 8.2, which was down from 8.3, but the core CPI, uh, which I think most is getting the blame for the sell-off, was a monthly rise of 0.6 versus a forecast of 0.4. Oh, yeah, the increase in the core rates over the past year has hit a new peak of 6.6 .6 from 6.3, which is the biggest gain in 40 years. Ooh, okay. So that prompted a big sell-off. Yes, and the market sold off hard. Hit, the, was it 3,500 roughly, right about? Maybe like two points above that. And then just ripped. <laughs> just, just. There's a big iceberg uh, of buy orders at 3,500. No, I, it's just, uh, I was just everybody buying. It wasn't, I didn't see any icebergs down there when I was watching it. It's just suddenly like selling just started getting absorbed and then it started moving up and then go back down, retest it, and then shoot back up even harder. It's like, oh man, this is getting really, this is getting really interesting. Uh, on a percentage basis, uh, if we look at the Dow, the difference uh, between the high and the low Intraday was 5.16%, which is the largest spread since April 6th of 2020. 
The last time the Dow gained at least 3% through the close in a day when it was down as much as 1.88% was on August 9th of 2011. Uh, the S&P was 2.6% higher after it was down 2.39% at its session low. The last time it gained at least 2.5% uh, was December 5th, 2008, when it was down by a similar amount. Uh, let's. I got this story from MarketWatch, and they're not usually my go-to for uh, explanations of why things happen, but... I kind of like the, the, the character that was uh, providing most of the comments on here. Uh, first of all, he said that he, he wouldn't uh, classify this morning's flush as capitulatory. The stock market is dealing with disappointing inflation reports a lot better than a short time ago. That's Mark Arbiter, the president of Arbiter Investments, LLC. And then at the end of it, he says here, while the stock market remains quite fragile, the ingredients for a strong counter tent ingredients remain for a strong counter trend rally of course we've been saying this for a few weeks already and so far we've ended up with egg on our face just a little less than the at the opening this morning <laughs> 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 all right hats off to you that was clever um, yeah so I, it sounds like there's just a lot too many people are short everybody was short and eventually you have to cover and once everyone starts covering that provides the buying pressure that supports the uh the turnaround point do you, you 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 feel like the that kind of pressure was was just covering combined with people going like oh wow this is cheap let's buy some well I mean it also that thirty five hundred was actually the fifty percent retracement uh, from the March twenty twenty lows to the peak okay so we know how important some of those fib levels can be so combining it with that mm -hmm. uh, yeah everybody taking profit there could be could add a lot of buying pressure wow uh, was I didn't get a chance to pull it up uh, on, on my machine because my machine is far, far away from me at the moment. What was the volume <laughs> like today? Uh, SPY was $147 million and counting. Uh, the day before was 76, so almost double the volume. Okay, so so a lot of these rallies I haven't liked the volume on, but that that sounds like uh, m maybe maybe this is the line in the sand. Maybe, well, maybe I don't know. Let's break it down by hour and see. Okay. I uh, just want to make sure it wasn't all pre-market during the CPI sell-off. <laughs> no, no, it definitely was not. Well, all right. All right. Well, I, I know, I know everybody will be watching to see if this is, this is the turnaround from that, this bear market. I was thinking that looked kind of capitulatory in nature. Seeing a, a, a expert say that he didn't think so makes me, me, me rethink that, but mm. I had never seen anything like that before. That was that was insane. The downside is uh, with inflation numbers the way they are, more than likely we're going to end up with two. I think they're now factoring in a greater than 50% chance of two 75-bit rate hikes to end the year, whereas we're expecting a 75 and a 50. All right. So shorts are back on. Uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> this rally could continue for a little bit, but hey, I don't think it's time to flip to the bear, uh, the bull hat yet. I'm still suspicious of the quantitative tightening mm -hmm. and its effect on on any kind of shift from a bear to a bull market. I do like that Edward Moya uh, in this article uh, seems to be convinced that the monetary policy that the Fed is enacting will undoubtedly send inflation lower. I don't know if I'm so sure about that yet. How long have we been raising rates now? Since like March? At least. Yeah. And how much has inflation gone down? Mm, none. In fact, it's risen. <laughs> Still going up. Yeah. Uh, how yeah. long until that takes effect? Are we sure it's not just the supply chain uh, that they were convinced that it was during the you know the 2020 that's driving inflation, and eventually the supply chain issues will get fixed. It might be a little more difficult if you're uh, you know raising the cost of borrowing money so people can't increase supply. But you know, I guess you know they do do you Fed you do you. Yeah, well, maybe the int raising interest rates will turn out to be transitory. <laughs> and, and, you know, it was in the eighties. It was in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord! Anyway, I don't know what else you got. You got anything uh, uh, good to bring up? Well, I mean, depends on what you call good. It's a it's a good story in terms of content, but the uh, content of the content is not good. Oh. Taiwan semiconductors have announced that they are cutting their capital spending by about 10%. Mm. 
So interesting. Uh, to quote the Bloomberg article by Debbie Wu, a dramatic sign of trouble for the technology industry. Yeah. Um, if they're cutting capital expenditures, that means they're not trying to increase their production as much, right? Yes. yes. So if we has the supply for semiconductors issue been like solved already then? Does that mean that's done? <laughs> Yeah, right. No more problems. Um, it looks like uh, they spent $40 billion last year on new equipment to manufacture more chips. And then it looks like this year they will have spent about $36 billion by the end of the year. Still a lot of money. Right, right. Uh, the, this would suggest to analysts that they are they're bracing for a larger than expected downturn. Mm -hmm. in the demand for the, the their chips. Right. And as we know, uh, Taiwan's semiconductor, I mean, they they make chips for, for everybody. Pretty much, yeah. But, I mean, how much of that is because the Apple and IBM and other places are trying to open their own chip manufacturing plants? You know, I just don't know. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it could be it could be some of it could be some of it you know uh but apparently applied materials incorporated a uh, leading producer of chip making equipment they've slashed their for forecast for the fourth quarter and we know intel the rumors are they're said to be preparing to fire thousands of their employees so mm, yeah looks like everybody is starting to brace for for a cut in in demand well, I mean, this is what you have to expect when you start raising interest rates for tech. Right. I exactly. I mean, the cost to borrow is going to be is a lot more expensive than it used to be. And right. And the new the new stuff from the the Biden administration, like it looks like special uh, uh, exemptions have already been issued. Mm. So Taiwan Semiconductor, they've already won a license from the U.S. to continue operating, building out. Uh, their 16 nanometer and 28 nanometer chip lines mm -hmm. in their China, their Nanjing China facility. So it it really is just an industry industry. It really is just an industry thing. It's not not like a sanctions thing. Right. Right. Yeah. So now looks like Taiwan Semiconductor, their market cap's gone from 550 billion in January to about down to about 320 billion. Yeah, it's, I think they're still doing better than Meta. <laughs> I bet you the employees at TSM uh, actually use their own semiconductor products. <laughs> you right, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Uh, well, speaking of other names, like, people around here like to bash. <laughs> Do you see that Elon Musk is selling perfume? I should say sold out a new perfume that he was trying to, that he just started marketing. Is it called Elon's Musk? No, no, <laughs> no. It's t it's called burnt it's called burnt hair. Burnt hair? Yes. What? He sold in six hours ten thousand bottles of this fragrance at a hundred dollars a bottle, and then on Wednesday he announced he sold another ten thousand. So he's made two million dollars selling uh, a fragrance that he branded to smell like quote repugnant desire, and he also changed his Twitter bio title to perfume salesman. Wow. So uh, Musk touted this perfume, burnt hair, as, quote, just like leaning over a candle at a dinner table without all the hard work. <laughs> Another marketing slogan was, stand out in a crowd, get noticed as you walk through the airport. <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. Uh, he tweeted, oh. uh, Musk tweeted, with a name like mine, getting into the fragrance business was inevitable. Why did I even fight it for so long? And then he added, please buy my perfume so I can buy Twitter. Yikes. <laughs> I think he's uh yeah trying to trying to finance that Twitter deal. Okay, okay. If he comes out with his own makeup palette, he's just going full YouTube influencer, man. What would you call it? Well, based on his fragrance line, I you call it mud and shit. <laughs> Raccoon eyes. Right? All the best shades of black and brown. Highlight those bags under your eyes. <laughs> Look like you just woke up. Yeah. <laughs> Show up to dinner smelling like burned hair and looking like you just rolled out of bed <laughs> <laughs> from a campsite. Or you're just coming off a week-long meth bender. Yeah, right. <laughs> That'd be a new dead old product. Meth you, teeth. Meth teeth. <laughs> get that I just, get that I just don't give a shit look. <laughs> I, I think like did he lose a bet? Is he is he really just trolling America as hard as he can? I don't know. He just took two million dollars from people, 
stupid enough to buy this fragrance. Where he's literally telling him, like, this bottle smells like shit. Yeah. This is horrible. Burnt hair is one of the worst smells. Seriously. Oh, oh I know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. Uh, I- all right. All right. Well. I He's- hope this becomes a thing and people start wearing it to like red carpet events. <laughs> and then everybody has to be like, oh, that smells so good. <laughs> and like kiss their ass. <laughs> right? It's just like an emperor's <laughs> new clothes thing. Like he's going to show up at a red yeah. carpet naked and yeah. be like, do you like my new clothes? What do you think of my suit? <laughs> Worship me. I am Elon. I've spoken. He probably could. I don't know. Wait a minute. He probably couldn't. The picture of him on the boat got a lot of shit. <laughs> it's a me, Wario. <laughs> All right, you got to wrap us up. What is what's the last one we got here? It looks like uh, Albertsons and Kroger might be merging. Well, I should say, looks like Kroger might be buying Albertsons. Uh, did Buffett sell off his stake in Kroger already? Did he have one in Albertsons too, or is it? I, I have no idea if Buffett has anything to do with this. Um, it's going to be an all cash acquisition. Mm-hmm. Shares of Albertsons actually got halted today on Thursday. Yeah, that's surprising. Uh, the, the stock was up more than 11%. Yeah, <laughs> while Kroger was just up a little bit. I was going to ask what the offer was. Uh, I, I did not see a specific offer in any of the news stories. Uh, just that uh, that they're talking about an all cash Ooh. acquisition. Well, if I had to guess, I'd say it's somewhere around twenty nine dollars a share. Oh, is that, what, <laughs> is that where Albertsons got halted? Uh, no, but I'm looking at that big green boner candle that we got to quote Vico. <laughs> yeah. That was a nice bounce. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So this would this would make a huge company. Uh, Kroger's are Kroger and their brands like uh, Fred Meyer, Ralph's, King Supers, obviously Kroger's. Uh, do they still have fries anywhere? They used to be fries in Tucson. Uh, they used to be in Tucson. Are they yeah. not anymore? Uh, I think they might actually just be called Kroger. Maybe, you know, maybe it's, still, it's probably still fries. Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't been shopping there for a while. Mm. Uh, anyway, they, Kroger's got 2,800 stores in 35 states, 400,000 some employees. Albertson's 2,200 stores in 34 states. Oh. Almost 300,000 employees. So this, this is going to be... Oh. They buy them out. They're looking at 5,000 stores. You got to wonder if the uh, SEC or antitrust is going to start looking into that. Right, right. Well, Walmart's are still bigger than them. Right. Uh, Amazon still owns Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. You know, Target does grocery now, too. Right. So so probably not. Well, they'll probably look at it. Probably just won't do anything. Uh, It's 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 incredible. I know I know I had a weird moment in the in inside an Albertsons last week when they had like a digital coupon. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, let me scan the digital coupon. And it was, it was like the same thing as the Safeway app. I didn't even know Albertsons and Safeway were the same company. Oh, yeah, that's right. I do remember that. Yeah. Uh, it's wild to me. And, and I feel like we're, we're heading towards Demolition Man where it's like, we've got three corporations and they own everything. <laughs> we're, go- we're all going to Taco Bell for a nice dinner. <laughs> right. Let me call ahead and get some reservations, Kyle. We don't want to. I want to be standing around all night. Ooh, going to Taco Bell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the sad Good thing boy. is i do get excited for taco bell <laughs> sometimes i uh, fucking love that uh loaded griller yeah yeah hey they they got anyway i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to show for taco bell I'll hey take. taco bell do you <laughs> need somebody to sponsor or you need looking to sponsor somebody <laughs> I, I will say you know taco bell these days does not make me shit for a week so hey thanks taco bell I got that over Chipotle. Chipotle had the new Taco Bell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, well, that bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, top quality content. Thanks for sticking around to the end, folks. I'm sure you gl- wish you didn't. <laughs> oh, uh, we, we appreciate you sticking around to the end. Like, share, subscribe. Let everybody know what a good time we have over here in the China shop. And we'll be back at you soon with some more exciting content. Until then, happy trades. Bye.
Two Bulls in a China Shop is an entertainment program, and all thoughts and opinions expressed in the show belong to the hosts and not of any company. They are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual or on any specific security or investment product. It is only intended to provide entertainment about stocks and the financial industry of trading. If you make trades based on what you hear in this show, you assume all risks for those trades. Think about a bicycle. It takes balance to get where you want to go. Now think about business. Whatever your business or organization, you ride the line between numbers and people. Just like the bike, it takes balance. CLA CPAs, consultants, and wealth advisors. That CLA will get you there. Clifton Larson Allen LLP Investment Advisory Services are offered through Clifton Larson Allen Wealth Advisors LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Think you know Amazon? Think again. Did you know you can get a seasonal warehouse job offer today? You don't even need to interview. That means you can make extra cash before the holidays. You can even pick your own payday. And seasonal jobs can lead to full-time, regular employment. You'll be amazed by what you can get as an Amazon warehouse associate. To learn more about all the benefits of working a seasonal job at Amazon, go to amazon.com/hourly. Amazon is proud to be an equal opportunity employer.